Hey, what's up everybody? Fuller here and welcome to our MetaSounds 101 part two video. In our last video, we talked about the basic wave player in MetaSound and how to get up and running with that. Today, we're gonna expand on that a little bit and we're gonna look at the inputs and output nodes and what some of those things do inside the MetaSound. So let's jump on in. So when we last left our project, we had a basic just third person map that we uh, imported uh, and created this. We imported some wave files and then we created this meta sound called my loop. So we're going to be just kind of like working on that now and picking up from where we left off in the last video. If you remember, we created an input, we created an output, and then we added the loop feature, this loop groove here. And then we did an on finish and then we did a left and right stereo output. I want to talk a little bit about uh, these inputs over here, these are all inputs, and then these over here are all outputs. Basically, if you remember, the meta sound concept is a flow graph. So, signal is flowing from here and it's flowing out of here. So, when we hit play, this wave is flowing out of these outputs. Now, what's all this other stuff? This blue node. It's a pin, it's called an input pin. This blue input pin is actually called the audio pin. And what this does is this, an, this is an audio buffer and this tells the wave player what to reference. So basically, right now it's telling us to reference this loop groove that we made, uh, which happens to be a basic groove at 120 BPMs. And we have it looping, so we hear it looping over and over we are telling that wave player to play that. Now, let's say we wanted to just use this to play a kick drum. We're just gonna play the kick now. That's what we're gonna do. So now when we repeat it, it's just gonna play that. And it's gonna loop that kick drum over and over the length of that audio file. Now, let's say we wanted to add a snare on top of that, or let's add a hi-hat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in a new wave player and we're going to tell this one on play actually what you can do here is you can drag you, over here on these inputs you can actually just click on them and drag them in drag that node and what that's doing is essentially it's referencing this input on play so every time you see this input on play all of these are triggered anytime you hit this button or if the game starts and this meta sound is inside the game. So you can also drag this pin to here, but then it starts making kind of spaghetti. So I like to keep it clean when I can. So right now it's it's basically doing the same thing. So then we wanna tell this, all right, we want this to play the hi-hat. Let's play that hi-hat, okay? Now, when I hit play, you're not gonna hear anything because even though this triggered and you can tell it triggers, because you see this line. When you see this line pulse in red, that means that that is being triggered, and then you see the audio signal also goes out. So that's your visual feedback that your meta sound is working. Now, the reason we don't hear this is because this is not patched to the output channels. Remember, these output channels are the final destination to send your meta sound out. So what we need to do is we need to actually connect this to the output, however, you can only connect one thing to an output at the same time. So if we hit play now, you're gonna hear the kick in the right channel and the hi-hat in the left channel, but that's not what we want. So what we need to do now is a very powerful yet easy concept in MetaSounds, and we're gonna bring in a mixer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix these two sounds together. And the way you do that, you just drag out of here and then type in mixer. We're gonna do a stereo two channel mixer. As you can see here, you can select up to eight channels of mono or stereo. We're gonna go stereo eight channel mixer. We're gonna bring this one into channel one and we're gonna bring this guy here into channel two. And then we're gonna go output left and right. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna sum these two channels just like uh, an audio or a digital analog, an analog or a digital mixer. Uh, it's going to combine these sounds together, and when I hit play, you'll hear both those sounds, and you also see the meta sounds activating here as well. 
Uh, here is the gain. This is default to one. You could set this to zero and you would only hear hi-hat. You could set this to one and you could set this to zero and you would only hear kick. You could set this to one and this to 0.5 and you will hear the hi-hat half as loud as the kick. And I like that, so we'll just keep that like that. And if we loop these, it's gonna loop them together. Now we are syncing these. Uh, cool thing about meta sounds is that they are sample accurate, meaning they are accurate. If my sound sources are 48,000 kilo or 48,000 kilohertz, that means that my meta sound can trigger within one forty-eight thousandth of a second, which is crazy accuracy. So it's sample accurate inside the meta sound source. It's not using the game block, it's using its own audio engine. If you if you have a song at 60 BPM, which is 60 beats per minute, which is one beat per second, that means a quarter note happens every second. That means an eighth note is a half a second, which is 500 milliseconds. A 16th note is a quarter of a second, which is 250 milliseconds. A 32nd note is 125 milliseconds. And a 64th note is actually 62 milliseconds. This meta sound is accurate up to 0 0.02 milliseconds. So a 64th note is 62 milliseconds. So you're talking another 10, 10 times faster than that would be 0.6 milliseconds. 10 times faster than that would be 0 0.06 milliseconds. So you're talking about 100 times faster than a 64th note at 60 BPM. So that shows you how accurate you can get with these meta sounds, which is really awesome. Um, and it gives you, as the composer, sound designer, the ability to really do some awesome uh, generative and um, procedural kind of stuff, which is really cool. And we'll be talking about that in future videos. But for now, we're showing you just the wave player. So what we're doing now is we've basically combined the wave players, we're looping them. Now, mine are looping in perfect time because the kick sample and the hi-hat sample happen to be exactly the same tempo, the exact same length, so it works. If one was shorter than the other, it would slowly get off. This isn't the most accurate way to loop stuff on top of each other, but for this demo, it works well. Let's talk a little bit more here. So. What is this start time here? What this start time does is this actually, say you don't wanna play the audio at the beginning of the sample. You can adjust this start time. We could go here and we could go, I don't know, point, uh, 15 seconds. These times are all in seconds. So now it's actually starting that kick sample after the transient. So it's kind of softening it up a little bit. You can use this you know, kind of manipulate where the, the file starts. Now you can hear when it starts looping though, it starts back from the top. So now my sample is just 0.05 behind because it started a little bit later than the other one. Pitch shift is a feature where you can actually adjust the pitch of the sample. So let's take the hi-hat here and let's isolate that. We're gonna turn down the kick to zero. And we're gonna play this. Hi-hat's cool. Let's pitch it up. Let's pitch it up two semitones. Mm, barely noticeable. Let's pitch it up 12 semitones, an entire octave. Pretty cool. Here's a little cool thing. What if we wanted to pitch that up gradually? Let's promote this pitch shift to an input and it's gonna give us a knob. You can change this knob to a slider, you can change it to a vertical slider, and you can also change it to uh, just a variable. And we're gonna put it back on slider, or I'm sorry, we're gonna put it back on knob, and we are going to um, set this parameter. Let's go from zero to two octaves, 24 semitones, that's two octaves. So now check this out, we're gonna play with this hi-hat in real time. So this is an example of a game variable. You could have your player's distance changing the pitch of the hi-hat, which is 
pretty awesome. All of these inputs can be adjusted in real time while it's playing, so super cool. Let's bring the kick back up, and now let's listen to that together, and I'm just gonna mess around with the hi-hat. Now if you hear, I just took this hi-hat up two octaves, so it actually pl is playing the audio file faster. So that's one of the features of the pitch shift. It actually plays the audio file faster. So now it's actually doubling the speed, or actually tripling, because the one octave, if we went to 12, which is one octave, that would be double. And then two octaves would be triple, basically. So it's doing some pretty crazy weird stuff there. Now let's look at the loop feature. It's pretty self-explanatory. When this button's clicked, it loops the entire audio file in its entirety. And the reason this works for these is because both audio files are exactly the same length to the sample. Now, loop start, loop duration. What this does is this allows you to uh, set the time that you want it to loop. So let's say we want to loop it at the beginning. Negative one here basically defaults the loop to until the wave is done and then it loops over. But let's just say I wanted to loop that to 0.2 seconds. Now listen to what happens. It's actually looping the hi-hat over. Oh, and you know what would be cool is if I did this and while I was doing this, it was adjusting the pitch, which is pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool stuff that and that's just like a basic kick in a hi hat hi hat so it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with meta sounds so those are pretty much all of the input sides what are the output sides so what the output sides do is on play what that does is that basically it just passes the trigger along so when this one hits play you could come out here and you could also start this one so essentially that's doing the same thing Oh, let's turn the loop duration back to negative one. So, so what that's doing is it's just passing the trigger along. On finished, what that does is that basically, if it's not looping, what that does, and we talked about this earlier, is that just when this file's done, it does something. So what we could do is we could take this on finished and move it down here. But what I wanna do is I wanna chain these together. So when this one finishes, I wanna start this one. So now the kick will play and then the hi-hat and then it'll finish. Oh, actually it's not gonna finish because I have it looping, but if I had it loop off, it would do it. So it goes kick, hi-hat, and then finishes. And then the meta sounds over. You can already start to see how you can kind of put things in a series and do some pretty complex chaining. On nearly finished, what this does is this sends a trigger right before it's done. And uh, we'll talk about this in future videos, but what this allows you to do is basically, so on a meta sound, you can't come here and you can't just loop this back. Whoa, you can't loop this back, it won't let you, okay? So what Epic did is there's a workaround here. This triggers when the wave player has almost finished the the block before it finishes so it basically allows it says right here allows time for logic to trigger different variations so if we had an array over here we could send this on an array and then that would change that array so when it looped around it played a different array so there's some workarounds here and we'll talk about this one more in detail because it's a pretty powerful feature which is why it's there on looped what this does is when the sound loops it will do something. So let's say we're looping this kick. When this kick loops, this, the hi-hat will come in. There you go. So that's looping, and every time it's looping, it's triggering the hi-hat. So that's a cool feature. Maybe you want something to loop first and then trigger something. Cue points here. Now, I did a whole separate video on cue points. You can go check that out. What cue points are is when you are exporting your audio file, you can actually embed cue points in them. And what a cue point is, it's just data in the WAV file that the Unreal Engine can access. I put cue points in this just to, to show you, but if you can come out here, out cue point, and I hit play, it's gonna trigger it right away because the beginning of an audio sound is always a cue point.
Now, if I wanted to, I could use other cue points inside the file to do other things. That's a whole separate video. You can go check out my cue point video if you're interested in that. Loop ratio, this basically returns the current playback location as a ratio. So if the whole loop is halfway through, you'll get a 0.5, because it's halfway done. Playback location is similar, except it's the absolute location of the wave file. So if the wave file is eight seconds, and you're at seven seconds, it's gonna return that value. You can use that information. By the way, any of these green buttons, so if you see a, a, a cyan colored node, that's time, that's a time variable. If you see a, a yellowish green node, I'm not sure what they call that color, vermilion maybe, I don't know. But uh, if you see a yellowish green node, that is a float node. A float is any number, a decimal, 1.3, 1.7, as opposed to an integer, which is like a whole number. Uh, a float would be a typical of an audio file length. So 3.00064328 milliseconds or something like that. So what, what these outputs do is it allows you to take those floats in specific points. So say I want to take the playback location and as soon as it gets halfway done, I'm gonna use that float Maybe I'm gonna divide that or multiply that by 10. When that gets to the halfway point times 10, whatever that number is, then I'm gonna do something else. So the floats really allow you to take math and do some massive complicated cool things. So that's kinda covers all of the outputs and that kinda wraps up this video, the wave player and things you can do with that. In the next video, uh, part three, we're gonna get a little more complicated and talk about how you can stack things and do some looping over top of each other. So make sure you check that video out. Thanks for checking out this one. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel and we'll see you in the next video.